Hi everyone! This video is on the topic of what treats to use when training your dog, as well as how to tell if a treat is of high or low value to your learner. It's important to understand that treats aren't intrinsically reinforcing to dogs. They are subjective to the environment and how the dog feels. So for example, a treat might be of high value to your dog in one circumstance during the day, and in another, in another circumstance, the treat might be of extremely low value or no value at all, or the dog might even feel punished by trying, you trying to feed him a treat. For example, in your living room, in the morning when you're doing a training session, your dog's really motivated to work for food with you, but then when you're just about to enter a dog park or your dog's just about to meet a friend, a, a person that he really likes, and you offer him a piece of food, he might not even eat it, or he might eat it like he's eating a piece of popcorn while watching an action movie, and who knows if it had any sort of reinforcing effect on his behavior. Or some dogs, even when you try to offer them a piece of food when they're not feeling like it, it can actually be punishing to a dog, and so they can start to make an association with your hand moving towards them with food as a punisher. So it's important to be able to read your dog's body language when he's receiving treats and pay attention to what he does after he eats the treat. The reaction that you're looking for is the dog promptly eats the treat and then looks for more, either sniffing on the floor, licking your hand, looking for crumbs, or looking at you or where the treats came from. Here's some footage of Sesame, an 11 week old puppy. After she eats the treat, she then sniffs to see if there's any last morsels and then licks the hand. And then as you'll see, she approaches as if to say, more please. For some dogs, if the treat is of lower value, they will take longer to chew the treat. Here, Sesame is offered a piece of food, but she immediately rejects it. Here, she eats the food, but then walks away. In both of these circumstances, the food is not going to function as a reinforcer. If you're in a non-distracting environment and the dog looks away as they're eating the treat or after they're done eating the treat, this is also a sign that the treat might not be functioning as a reinforcer. I like to use real meat that I've cooked. Here's some boiled chicken, some ground up turkey, and some steak. Um, I've cooked mine on the stove and boiled it, but you can also dehydrate meat or bake it. Here's some really cooked broccoli as well. And then over here are some commercial treats that are dried, but the problem with using too many of these is that they have a lot of preservatives in them. And some kibble, if that's got a lot of grain in it, um, that can be problematic for some dogs. Of course, I'm not any expert on pet nutrition, but the way that I look at it is the healthier, the fresh meat is the healthiest for the dog. Um, also dairy and liver can be problematic. Um, if you give too many liver treats, it can have a lot of toxins in it. And dairy isn't that great for dogs. But if you're doing something like changing behavior with behavior modification, tiny bits of cheese, if they're going to greatly improve your dog's life, I suggest using them to get behavior. Hey, pop-ups. So we're gonna do a little food taste test here. Um, and I'm gonna start with this kibble and give Wish the kibble to see if she enjoys it. And she dropped it on the floor and then she didn't eat it. So if I move it over here, do you want that? Go get it. You can see that she doesn't like the kibble at all and that she's pointing <laughs> at what she does want. So now she's too close. So here's another commercial treat. Um, I think this one's rabbit. Okay, here's some turkey, ground turkey. Now it's not a good idea to have your, when you're trying out treats, it's not a good idea to have what I have here. This is just for a video. But what can happen is even if they don't like the treat like the kibble, they might come closer as if to say they want more, even though uh, they didn't like the kibble because they can smell the other treats. So try the treats separately and see what your dog's reaction are to the treats in your home and in other places like the park. This is the dried jerky treats versus chicken. So I'm going to give him one of these treats and I'm going to give him one of these pieces of chicken. 
and you can see that he is looking at the chicken and when he takes one of these treats, he's still focused on this chicken over here. Another test to see how valuable a reinforcer is to your dog is to drop a piece of food and move in the opposite direction and note how quickly the dog turns to come to look for more. Make sure you're using the appropriate sized treats. These tiny ones are for toy dogs and small puppies. Small dogs, tug is 10 pounds. These ones that are about the size of a pea are for border collies and medium sized dogs. And then larger breeds like Labradors, German Shepherds, and giant breeds like the Great Dane. To make sure you're not overfeeding your dog, you can measure out their daily ration of treats and put that into your bait bag. If you use your dog's meals for training, you can simply use what's left in your bait bag at the end of the day for your dog's dinner. It's a great idea to bring a variety of different treats to something like a dog training class or the park if you're going to go there to train, but I don't suggest mixing them together like this because what you can do is use one treat and then if your dog gets bored of that treat, you can try another treat and because of the novelty of it, your dog might be more interested in working for the new treat. Now I'm going to talk about when to use high value treats as opposed to low value treats. I like to use high value treats when training something that you want the dog to be fast moving or enthusiastic. So for example, a recall where your dog comes running to you and then you get out the treat that they're really excited about and throw it for your dog and then they run and they get the treat and then you reinforce that running motion and they're very happy and enthusiastic about getting their treat. I also like to use high value treats for counter conditioning where you're changing your dog's emotional response to something in the environment. Now you want to make sure that the treat isn't over exciting the dog or making the dog hyper fixated on just the treats so that they're not even noticing the thing that you want them to change their emotion about. But if you're just using a low value treat and the dog's getting their kibble and they, they're like, oh, I guess I can eat that, um, you're not going to create as powerful a change of emotion in your dog if they're just like, I guess I can eat these pieces of kibble, as if your dog sees a person and wow, they get a piece of roast beef or some um, dried fish that they've never had before and they think, wow, this is the most amazing thing that's ever happened to me um, in the last few weeks. And it all happened because of that person showing up. Um, rather than, oh, kibble, I get this all day, every day of my life since I was a puppy. I like to use lower value treats when working on some calm behaviors, such as the dog relaxing and settling on a mat. For example, if you're teaching your new puppy to go out to a mat and lay down and you have some extremely delicious steak that your puppy is very excited about, it's going to be hard to get them to go to the mat and stay there when they when all their senses are, are telling them to come towards you. So a lower value treat to begin with, but I wouldn't suggest a treat that the dog is not interested at all. That's not what I mean by low value. Okay, so another way that I like to use low value treats is if I'm working with multiple dogs and I don't want them too excited about the food because it's the first time with the dogs working near each other, I'm gonna choose a lower value treat that all the dogs find low value so there's not any sort of competition going on when first working with group behaviors. Then, when the dogs get used to working with each other for low value treats, then I start to make the treats of higher value so they get used to the concept of being more excited by the food when near each other. I also like to use low value treats as distractions for proofing behaviors. So for example, if you want to teach your dog to come away from food, towards you if someone's handing them out treats or they see food or trash or poop, rabbit poop on the ground that you want to recall away from food. I like to always begin where the low value food or the food that has no value to the dog is around and when you recall your dog they're getting the higher value food. So you're using that low value food as a distraction for the dog. Then when you've had success with the low value treat distractions, you can start to use higher value treat distractions to proof behaviors. 
All trainers are going to have a different opinion over what is the perfect level of arousal and interest in a reinforcer in a specific training situation. But for me, what's really important is if it's something important to you, you want to make sure that your dog is focused either 100% on you or 100% on where the reinforcement is going to come from or 100% on the task that they're doing. If you see your dog starting to check out, that is really good information that's telling you that something about the training situation is not worth the reinforcement. Either the dog is in a distracting environment, or the training task is too hard, or the treats that you have aren't reinforcing enough for the dog to want to do these behaviors or the behavior that you're asking because the dog keeps checking out. So anytime the dog checks out means you have to start to reassess your training plan and make it so that the dog is 100% focused. And sometimes that could be just as simple as using a higher value treat. But oftentimes you might need to change the location that you're training or work on the steps in smaller approximations so they're easier for your dog as you progress. When training using a high rate of reinforcement, where your dog is getting treat after treat every few seconds as they're learning a new skill, I suggest using soft, small, moist treats rather than big, dry treats. Because what can happen is you want to have a quick repetition of behavior so your dog learns a skill, but if they have to start crunching and chewing on a treat, it can slow your training down. Also, another really important thing to mention here is that one of my favorite trainers, Kay Lawrence, says, this is what I learned as a new trainer, is that you should never break the treats up while you're training. You want to cut the treats up before you train so when you've clicked, your dog earns his treat. Or when you mark, you say yes, your dog gets their treat. Instead of where they've done their good job and then you're sitting there breaking up the treat into tiny pieces while your dog is waiting, that's really not fair. So, Spashi, are you ready for a demo? As you can, I'll demo with the dry treats to show the difference in that if I wanted to teach wave and then my dog has to sit here and crunch, crunch, crunch. Oh, she, <laughs> she swallowed it all. <laughs> the, the demo was that she was gonna take a long time to eat, but she's a pretty good eater of dry treats. Now I'm going to use the moist, soft treats and you'll see how much faster the training is when the dog can easily eat the treat like this. Are you ready? Wave. Awesome. Good. Wave, wave, wave. Good job. Wave, wave, wave. Awesome. I often see people feed their dog a treat for a behavior that the dog has performed and then they will pet their dog in quite a rough manner because they're excited that the dog just did an amazing job. However, sometimes the petting that is done uh, as a reinforcer can sometimes not actually be reinforcing to that dog at that moment. Some dogs just love petting and they sometimes love petting while they're eating. But as you can imagine, for us humans, if you're at a restaurant and you're enjoying your meal, you don't also want a back massage or to be rubbed up and down on your back by your partner or your family member. You prefer having your reinforcers separate. So you might find that your dog actually just wants to work for the food. When he's got his job, he, you've told him what to do, he wants the reinforcer that he's expecting, which is food. If he's expecting petting, he might be disappointed that he gets the food instead of the petting, but usually if you have food on you and your dog is anticipating food, sometimes they can be avoiding of being pet while they're working for food, and we have to respect that. Also, if your dog doesn't really like to be petted, if you notice them trying to avoid it or they're wincing or doing lots of calming signals when you pet your dog, what can happen if you feed a treat and then pet your dog and your dog's not enjoying it is you can actually be lowering the value of being fed a treat in that training situation. And I've actually even seen a dog that Sit, that in a training class that was sitting for a treat and as soon as the owner started to pet the dog while giving the treat then the dog stopped, started to refuse to sit because he didn't want to be petted anymore and the owner was confused. So as soon as the petting was out of the picture the dog was happily sitting again because he wanted to work for the food and not be petted in that social environment. As you're watching this video you might be thinking to yourself 
gosh, my dog isn't very motivated by any type of food, or my dog is overexcited about every type of food. So I actually have two video tutorials on each of those topics, and I'm going to link them in the description below. But the, the value of food isn't intrinsic, and the way it makes an animal react isn't always the same, and it's changeable. So don't worry too much if your dog's not interested in food or too excited by food, because you can change their reaction to food with training. So check out those videos, and it does take time, but also dogs go through different phases of behavior. So if you have a puppy that's not very interested in treats, you could find in just a few weeks that now you have the opposite problem, that the puppy's too excited about treats or vice versa. So don't just get fixed on, oh no, my puppy hates treats, or oh no, my puppy is too excited by treats. It is changeable. If your dog is under-motivated by a treat, I suggest not working on any new behaviors or behavior modification, and instead, you can work on behaviors your dog already knows. But if he's refusing to take treats or he's just looking around at the environment, you have to understand that your treats are probably not reinforcing anything and that a better goal would be to try and get your dog motivated for the reinforcement in that environment before then trying to use the reinforcement to train your dog. Slash, are you ready to do a taste test? You are. Do you like the broccoli? You do? Okay. What about steak? Do you like the steak? You do. What about kibble? Do you like the kibble? You don't. Do you like it a little bit? Okay. <laughs> How about liver? You, you don't like liver. Do you like it a tiny bit? But not that much. No, okay, well, let's see. Rabbit treats? Do you like rabbit treats? Boiled chicken? Do you like boiled chicken? Do you, do, you, you do, you like boiled chicken. Do you like it so much you might say abwa? Do you wanna say abwa? <coughs> yes. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to support my work, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. You can also become a supporting member of channel Kikopup by clicking the join button. See you later, guys.